Yep, the Lucidity trial, which has just completed, enrolled 598 patients globally. We were in North America, Canada, all through Europe and the UK. And the really interesting thing about our studies is we've always encompassed the whole spectrum of AD. A lot of the trials are focused just on MCI or MCI and mild, but there's a huge unmet need for the, the mild to moderate dementia sufferers to be enrolled in trials, be able to participate and be able to take advantage of the offering of being in a clinical trial. So we covered the whole spectrum from MCI due to AD right through to mild to moderate AD. So that's really important that we had that covered so everyone can benefit and everyone can take hope from what we have been developing. So our primary endpoints were both cognitive and functional. So we looked at the ADAS-COG and the ADL. The ADAS-COG is the, the cognition, ADL is function, because it's not enough to have an improvement in cognition, that needs to translate into someone's functional lifestyle, so that the patient, their family or their caregivers, they see that sort of benefit, that improvement, that retention of independence or memory, which is critical to people in, in terms of just being who they are and, and retaining their functionality. Uh, we also looked at brain volumes. Now what we've seen, and we've only so far shared 12 month data because we've only just had database lock a few weeks ago. So the 24 month data is still under analysis. But what we are seeing is a marked improvement in our MCI population and a definite slowing down of the progression of the usual expected decline in the mild to moderate AD population. And this has now also been supported very strongly by our biomarker data, which is what we presented here at AIC. The biomarker story is amazing, and, and as you'd be aware, and, and everyone listening to this would know too, it's been the hot topic throughout all the conferences for the last sort of two, three years. Although it's always been talked about, it's really coming to the forefront. Uh, with the advent of the validated blood assays, this has become a real, a really positive reality, if you like, for patients and for physicians. So we did look at our baseline and our 12-month samples of all our patients across the spectrum for the NFL, and we have seen a marked reduction, a 93% reduction in the pre-specified analysis um, as randomised for our subjects, and that has been backed up also by the PTAR 181 marker. So the biomarker evidence is, is incredibly important because there is absolutely no subjectivity in that. There's nothing that influences that except the effect of the drug, which is fantastic news and hugely supportive for us. When you finish the trials, and as we say, we've finished now and we've got all our supportive data, we are engaging with the regulators. And, and that's both here in the UK uh, sorry, we're here in Amsterdam, <laughs> in the UK where we're based with the MHRA and we've had the Innovation Passport awarded there. So they are helping us with a roadmap to navigate the regulatory pathway there. And we are planning to engage with the FDA also. So of course we will follow the pathway set down by the regulatory bodies and hopefully um, with their assistance and with everything going well, we will be able to bring this to patients who are most in need of a treatment.